Hi guys, it's Pixels Tech here. Today I'm going to give you a quick overview of what's new in Widgie 2.2. Those of you that have followed some of my videos already, you'll know that Widgie is one of my preferred apps when creating widgets for my iOS themes. So it's always really great that we get some new features and updates. So I'm going to go through a lot of the main features with you today. And we're going to start with the one that literally jumps out at us, and that is the emboss effect. As you can see with the widget in front of you, I've made this widget with most of the new features that are available to us. And those features consist of emboss. The calendar compact mode now has more options. There's a massive uh, variety of new fonts that you can use. There's a new automation view for those that use automations. There's a new feature called text charts. The tab actions has had a refresh. There's some UI changes, bug fixes, and iOS 14.2 compatibility. So let's dive straight into Emboss. And to get Emboss, you're going to go to any symbol, picture, shape, whatever you want. And it's going to be at the bottom of your effects tab. So to turn Emboss on, you're going to press the little slider until it's green. And you can see on the widget, it's now got a 3D effect. And you can adjust that by adjusting the Emboss amount up and down. You can press the settings to put a fixed amount in. Or you can change the angle of the Embossed effect. Also, you can change the color of the shadow. And what really works really well, I think, is with my text at the top of this widget, having an emboss effect on the text itself and a shadow behind it. I think it looks really uh, 3D. And as you can see on the screen, you can change the color of the shading. But my personal preference is to use an actual shade like blacks, whites, and gray. Now we're going to have a quick look at the calendar. And as you can see on my calendar, it does have an emboss effect. If you want to get that effect too, you have to duplicate the layers and hide or transparent the colors of the actual calendar itself. But let's go into our calendar and scroll to the top and you can see the compact mode. And you're just going to press the plus or the minus and you'll start seeing rows be either being added or removed. And you can choose from one, two, three, four or five. And this feature just gives you a lot more freedom with your calendar. So hopefully your productivity widgets can be a lot more to your personal preferences. Now, the next thing we're going to talk about is the tap actions. And this has had a massive revamp. So we're going to go into a tap action and it gives us a lot more options here. So as you can see in front of you now, this looks very different to what we're probably used to. And this actually has four layers within the tap actions. So the top option is now your widget action. So that's either a button or to reload the widget. So I'm going to leave this on reload widget. And the second one is a brand new feature, which is play sound. So as you can see, you've got plenty of different sounds here. And these are the actual iOS sounds that you actually get on your uh, device itself. And there's plenty to play around with. I've had quite a lot of fun. I've even made myself a bit of a soundboard. Um, it it's, works pretty well and you'll, I'm sure you'll get some enjoyment out of it. So yeah, go and have a look through all of these just like I am now and pick your widget sound for when you press your tap action. Yeah, I absolutely love that feature. Uh, option three is vibrate on or off or yes or no. Uh, that's as simple as your phone vibrating when you press the widget or the tap action. And then the bottom row is your where you'll find your open apps, your run shortcuts, and your RSS feed links. Uh, also a minimized widget there. So as you can see, a tap action now does more than one thing, or at least it bundles in quite a few different options together. So I'll go and have a play around. I'm just going to give you a quick demonstration now of how it works. And as you can see, all of those actions have been done just by one tap. Now I'm just going to get a button ready. So I'm just going to make this airplane mode a button to turn all the others off. And there's that sound again. Love that sound. So as you can see, it's hit those other layers. It's made the little sound and it's opened my settings all with one tap. So moving on, now we're going to have a look at the automation changes. Now I love automations. I'm not as advanced as some people. I can admit that. But I do love having a little automation on there. So the biggest change is the interface. As you can see, it looks incredibly um, aesthetically pleasing. Um, it reminds me a bit of a DAW, which is uh, a bit like Logic Pro. 
if you've ever used a synthesizer or maybe an EQ plugin or something like that, you'll know exactly what I mean. But yeah, it just looks fantastic. So we will again do. We're going to do a video on automations, um, and I'm going to show you how everything gets automated. But uh, for those that already use automations, this is a great feature for you. And also to those that want to learn, it should be a lot easier to use now. The UI has improved. Now moving over to text charts. This is a new um, feature that's been added to Widgie 2.2. And as you can see on the screen, text charts are charts that are used via the text asset. So the way these work is it's the little box. They are the values of the data that you're trying to review. And as you can see um, from the screen, memory used, that's full. Um, and disk space, that's around 60% uh, full. And battery, that's about 90% full. So you can see that it's using the data available and displaying it via uh, text objects. And you've also got options like uh, percentages and percentages with names and values, bar charts, and the horizontal charts that you can see on the screen. And as you can see now, I'm just flicking through some of the options. So what I'm gonna quickly do is I'm gonna create a new text layer. And then we're going to show you some of the fonts that you can use and then we'll just add one of these text charts so as you can see there are plenty of new fonts i don't know exactly how many there are it looks like they've at least doubled if not more so it gives you a massive variety of what you can do and i'm really pleased we've got more fonts because it just gives us that extra creativity when we come to our widgets so just flying through now back to the text charts and you can see there's different versions and as you can see it's listed. So this is just one text layer and you can divide these up if you go to the text options by the list separator. So you just add uh, how you want it to be separated by a comma, a full stop, whatever you want to do. So that's a summary of some of the biggest features in Widgie 2.2. There are obviously some other features like bug fixes and um, well one of the main ones is the new UI display. In front of you there I'm just showing you some of the automations that I've created and I've just been playing around with that display. I'm not very good on automations so this has helped me a lot that new UI. And while we're on UI, uh, the user interface, you can see that there have been some slight changes in the main menu. Um, the listed buttons have now been turned into more of a grid. And you can see the new video buttons, which will feature some of the tutorials that I'll make, which will be great for everyone using Widgie, because then if you've got any queries, there'll be plenty of videos that we're going to do, and you'll have hopefully an answer for most of the issues. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm really looking forward to see some of the popping widgets that are created by the emboss feature. Please keep an eye out for all of my upcoming videos, and we're going to get really dive deep into some of the features in Widgie. So don't forget to like, subscribe, ring my bell, feed my ego, and I'll see you on the next one.